So here we are, we're talking about a bourbon, again, that's starting to be very anticipated. This being their batch 10 from K. Luke. This is their cast strength bourbon, blends of Indiana, Kentucky. Let's talk a little bit about that today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. All right, so let's go ahead and get into from K. Luke. This is their newest release, batch 10. This is blends of Indiana and Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys. This again, batch 10 coming in at 120.2 proof. It is non-age stated and the MSRP on this one's gonna come in at right around 110 proof. So if you're familiar with some of the prior batches, Jonathan, his wife and his team have continuously been hitting it out of the park. I'm extremely excited to dive into today's review and kind of just go over some of the not only specs, but what this one has to offer. In my opinion, it's gonna be one that I think you're ultimately going to really need to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and kind of dive into this one a little bit. We'll get into, again, the color, you know, medium kind of amber. Again, moving the whiskey around the glass, nice oil so far. Love that, non-chill filtering, none of that. They're doing all the blending themselves. And if you know Jonathan, he's passionate about whiskey, he has done lots of barrel picks lots of blending in his days. So he's quickly becoming one of those guys that's known for his blending. Therefore, the whiskeys we're all gonna wanna seek out. So let's go ahead and dive into the nose and see what this one's gonna give us. Boy, so my first impression is this big, deep, rich, kind of fresh caramel, almost butterscotch notes. Great baking spices on this one. It's one of the things that one of the things that's really standing out to me is kind of a heavy nutmeg note. It's a beautifully balanced so far nose. There is a little hint of a, a nutty characteristic on this one. Some nice burnt orange. So I'm guessing this is probably where some of the Indiana or MGP bourbons kind of starting to show up. Nice kind of honey, like a spicy honey note little hint of like leather there. So not overly dominant in, in leather or tobacco, but there's a little hint of like a leather note. We'll even say like going to some of the baking spices, it's more of kind of a, a black pepper than anything. But the one thing I'll say about this is it feels very cohesive, very well blended. So we'll see if all of that translates over to the palate and becomes something again that we want to seek out the batch 10 from K. Luke. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the palette. Cheers. So let's first address the texture and mouthfeel of this bourbon. I'm going to say the texture is like ultra creamy. Texture, I'm going to say again from that creaminess, there's not a lot of thinness. It feels kind of rich and thick so that's already kind of leaning or moving in the right direction so again mouthfeel texture of a whiskey in my opinion i think a lot of others is extremely important so so far we're moving in the right direction so we're going to dive into what the uh, palette has to offer right now cheers wow so fresh warm caramels, fresh, warm butterscotch, if that's a thing. Texture-wise, like I mentioned before, thick, rich, creamy. Great balance of spice, much more of that kind of spicy orange, little bit of kind of chocolate notes are kind of starting to come through on this one. I like how it's not overly spicy, but there's this kind of medium, lingering spice that's just sitting right on the palate and just kind of resting there. You're getting all of that and those, again, underlying kind of caramel, butterscotch, a little bit of that spicy orange, honey type of note. So, so far, this thing is really moving in a direction that I'm, that I'm really, really enjoying. Again, the baking spices are there. They're slightly muted, but they're, they're there. It's adding to that sweetness and the texture of the whiskey. So 
let's think about it like this. So you've got a lot of that sweetness that's up front with, again, that kind of honey, orange, vanilla, caramel, butterscotch. And I just rattled off a lot of things, but there's all of that. That spice layer is there along with some of the oak that's allowing for this to be extremely well balanced. And, and when you start to kind of break down a whiskey, that's a beautiful thing. That's a well blended bourbon. And this is kind of showing out as that, like right now, I think the baking spice that's there, when I referenced muted is there, but it's balancing out that kind of sweet characteristic that this has. So the oak components blended again with those, those kind of sweet components is allowing for this to be a really, really well done and blended bourbon so far. The oak component on this feels just perfect. Um, I will say this, I think this feels like to me, in my opinion, one of the more well blended bourbons that I can think of here so far in 2024. It's allowing for all of these individual kind of flavor profile or flavor notes that I've given you to really work well together. So as we kind of go back to this and, and break this down in, into kind of sections, again, I mentioned the mouthfeel and texture being kind of spot on. And when you get into now the rich kind of fresh or warm caramel, butterscotch, again, some maybe slight chocolate, orange, spicy orange, maybe some honey notes, slight chocolate notes, all working extremely well together. And that's the sign, in my opinion, of a very well blended bourbon. When you don't have one or two kind of notes that are dominant, you're getting all of these working extremely well together, very cohesive, blended extremely well. And, and for me, that's one thing I truly appreciate in a, in a blended bourbon when you get all of that because it allows all of those components to work extremely well together. And this batch 10 from K. Luke is, um, is doing all of that again, in my opinion. Yeah, I can't get away from the, the slight kind of rickhouse oak, that chocolate, that spicy orange, that butterscotch, fresh caramels, little hint of like leather, maybe some tobacco notes that are there. The brown sugars are there, but they're, they're a little bit not as dominant, not as big and bold. All the other flavors that I've kind of described have kind of taken over that a little bit. More on the decadent side, meaning like that sweet, rich kind of characteristic. So if you're somebody who appreciates a slightly sweeter, but all very well balanced bourbon, I think you're gonna absolutely love this batch. Now, in full transparency, this and, and this was sent to me uh, by K. Luke. Now, I'm just giving you what it is that I'm tasting. I'm not telling you that you need to love it or anything along those lines. I'm expressing to you what it is that I'm getting. So in terms of value and should you buy it, that will be up to you. If you're liking what it is that I'm describing, then, then perfect. I mean, I'm a guide, that's all that it is. But again, when we get samples, I just want people to understand that I'm just giving you what it is that I'm nosing and tasting, your interpretation of that and whether you feel it's worth your money, that's entirely up to you. All of this is super subjective. But again, I just want you to know what it is that I'm tasting. And again, hopefully you appreciate that. I'm gonna say overall, this is maybe in my opinion, if not the best, one of the top three blended bourbons that K. Luke has, I'll say produced. And in my opinion, it's 100% worth the $110 uh, price point. 
Again, that's for you to decide if you want to spend your uh, hard-earned money on that. But I think for what this has to offer, it's a very well done bourbon and one that an awful lot of people are truly, truly going to enjoy. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, I finished the sample. So if that tells you anything about what this batch 10 has to offer and, and kind of its uh, profile, it's one that fits within my wheelhouse. But I will say this, it feels like a bourbon that is extremely well blended. All of these components have worked extremely well together. As much as they can be blended together, but still be somewhat individual, this bourbon has given us that. So I would suggest, if nothing else, if you can try it, if you can get a sample, do that. But again, in my opinion, is it worth that $110 price point? For me, I'm gonna say yes. I think it's that good of a bourbon and one that may really kind of sneak into that top 10-ish you know, bourbons of 2024. It is ultimately that good in, in my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, if you're somebody who appreciates the uh, my palette or what it is that I've described with this, Again, take that for what it's worth. But there you have it. The Batch 10 from K. Luke blends of Indiana and Kentucky all at 120.2 proof, $110 price point, non-age stated. And, and that's exactly what Batch 10, in my opinion, uh, again, has to offer. So take it for what it's worth. But I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to uh, follow me, you can on Facebook and Instagram, uh, both of those places at My Bourbon Journey. If you'd like to support the channel and become part of the uh, Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description below. So with that being said, guys, thanks again. I appreciate it. I have no more whiskey in my glass, but remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers. That's a good one. Slow it through. Oh, 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 oh,